Oh, oh Jilly, hey. that hair. Is that music? I don't even remember your hair. Oh, oh God, Jilly, my you've Lord. got the hair down. How young I look there? I don't think I did an interview like this, thank God. Jilly, your hair. I know. It doesn't that look like fresh though, though there, isn't it? It's got layers and all sorts. Now, I think I prefer it darker. Yeah. I do, just the maintenance side of it. Mm. Look like Katrika there. Was this your? The, this you, was my sign. This is the signing. The, this is the first day where I'd like come see the training ground and that. Oh, black boots. Mm, I was old school. Chilly. If honestly, if someone paused that and showed me right. that, I would not know that was you from the side. It's crazy, isn't it? Doesn't it feel like ages ago we played at Rush Green? Yeah. Nice warm compose. Look at that. Oh, Game face. Serious. I don't think I did one of these. Oh. oh. The non celebration. <laughs> I celebrated for you. <laughs> this is the one that and, everyone and Jane Ross goes and Lisa. mad. No, I know. That's a good ball by Leanne. That's a great header. Did you feel like you couldn't celebrate? Yeah, do you know why? Because I think we'd spoke about it as well, I think leading up to that week where it was, we'd said, like I said, oh, I hadn't scored. And I think, I don't know if it was you, but someone was going, you're saving it for Chelsea. Yeah. And then I remember when Leanne put that ball in and as it was coming, I thought, oh my God, like, I could do this here. It was in open play as well, wasn't it? Yeah. But it was... stayed up from the corner. Yeah. And then obviously then scored it. But I thought I'd be respectable and not celebrate. To be one all. To be one all. Yeah. Make a point. Take the point. And this one here, yeah, so <laughs> when I was walking up, I was thinking, she's going to know where I'm going, so I'm going to change it. Yeah. I mean, and I'm lucky it took a bobble. Because it, it bounced over her arm. I remember you saying after that as well. I'll just watch it. It's a long run up the woman's head. <laughs> like, oh. I normally go across, across. I remember you, I love that passion though. But I'm, I'd obviously just missed my penalty. So I was very happy. This it. is when we, is this when? Oh, Cho. But I remember you said after, oh, I didn't realise that was the one that I had to score to keep us in. Yeah, it. no, I didn't. And that's mad, because to me, I was like, if she misses, we're out. Yeah, no, I didn't think that at all. I'm probably glad I didn't know that, because yeah. obviously I think if I'd have known that, then I probably would have been a bit more nervous going up there. But all the time, I just kept thinking, don't change it, don't change it. Mm -hmm. Then I just thought, she's, I don't know why, like, I just thought she's going to know my way I'm going. Yeah. So I'm going across that way, that open up. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky it took a bobble, but... Well, after some of the penalties in that penalty shootout, it yeah. was a great pen. But Cho, I mean, like the fact she, like, I mean, I didn't know she smiled until we watched it back, <laughs> but like the fact she Can smiled when she took the ball, it was just like, I was never in doubt. And I remember we'd done penalties, like the week building up to yeah. it, obviously. And um, she missed every single penalty and put it over the bar and I was thinking, oh, she's like, I'm not yeah. sure. And then it's the I only think one that counts. Yeah, it? I think when she was stepping up, I was just thinking of like how technical she is as a player. I thought there's just no doubt she's going to put it yeah. in. Like I sort of that that calm, you know, that calmness. Yeah. Of you needed that someone who's a bit like she probably didn't have a clue either as well. Sort of the the whole meaning behind that penalty. Yeah. You know how like serious it was. Yeah. Obviously reverse smiling when she went but up then anyway. She ran off celebrating. I mean, we ran the opposite direction. I remember. Yeah, I remember <laughs> you going the other way and just sitting on the floor crying, and I come <laughs> home and I just kissed your head. <laughs> Oh, it's such an emotional thing. I don't know why day. we ran off the other way. Oh, we run to the fans. No, <laughs> look at that. It's pathetic. Oh. <laughs> this is probably the only time on the pitch we've both cried at the yeah. same time. Even now, it makes me a little bit teary. Do you know why? Because it was the fans were just unbelievable that yeah. day. Like We took about 800 away, didn't we? Yeah. Unbelievable. What did it feel like leading us out? Right, so you know it's like... Well, I was saying this, I said this the other day, yeah, so like not many people know this, but when I went there the year before with Chelsea, and obviously we'd won, but I was just like probably the lowest that I'd ever been really in regards to pro, like my pro career. Obviously I didn't get on in that. And I remember sitting in the bar afterwards and there was like me, Lil, and then like my dad was sitting opposite me. And I said, it's mad, like, I remember sitting there with my dad in the bar and I went to my dad, like, I knew I was gonna go. And I said, I don't know where I'm going, dad, but I'm telling you this now, 
next year I'm coming back here with my new team and I'm going to lead them out. And he was yeah. like, well, that's what you think, girl. Like, you go and get it. Like, you go and do it. I said, it's mad. Like, then, when I was standing there with Beardy and I was thinking, I remember being here, like, literally 12 months earlier saying that. And even at the time you say it, the chances of you doing it yeah. are very, very, very slim, slim yeah. you know? But it was just incredible. I think, like, obviously, family and friends were all there, but Wembley's just a day that's just... It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Like, yeah. The whole singing the national anthem, I everything, mean, the DJ. Just hearing bubbles, like the hairs on the back of my neck. Just from and we should, we should have scored this. Yeah, I know. Like, it was a great save, wasn't it? Yeah. We could have been going in 1-0 up. Yeah. I think first half, we probably arguably edged it and were maybe the better team in the I first just, half. Yeah. In ter- maybe not in terms of possession, but the chances that we created and that we were really resilient at the back and then obviously their quality showed in the second half. But Yeah. I just think that we put so much into the first half that when the second half, when the first goal went in, it just sort of was like bang, bang, bang. But yeah. I just think is we were so tired from defending yeah. so well. And I think it's just like the emotion of the day and everything, like for us as a team, it was like the first time that we'd, I mean, it was our first season, wasn't it, yeah. for West Ham, but it was like the first time we'd all experienced that. <laughs> is this where you with <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. I've got a couple of people oh, that year. I could probably go through my whole career and not mention what I've been through. I felt so distant from them and I felt so lonely. What was, what was the lowest moment? Probably when, well, when I did, I took the overdose. When I was 16, 17, like, going away to, to the academy. Like, if I'm being brutally honest now, I said to my mum the other night that I wish I'd never have gone. Like, if I could change something now about growing up, they always say, what advice would you give to yourself if you were younger? Like, mine would be, I oh, don't go to the, the academy. And that's nothing against Arsenal, it's nothing against the academy. But I just think now, like, I wish I'd have stayed at home. I would have wished I'd have gone to a college and learnt a trade um, and come out of something. I was destined to- Do you find to- it hard to watch? Or do you think, like, now you've spoken about it a lot? No, like, I found that interview, I think I was all right with, and then it was the, I think a couple of days later, I'd done the BBC interview with Joe Curry, and that's the one I remember just crying in the change room, and it, it just sort of come from nowhere. Like, in that interview, I didn't even get choked up or anything talking about it. Yeah. But then I think when I was with Joe Curry, and she was just, like, it was just very to the point, and there was, like, everyone was standing there, and it was just sort of then re-going over that night. I think that's what then made me just go. But I just said I didn't expect the the impact that I got from it. Um, And the, I think it's all sort of that fear of you're going to get like abuse, you're going to get trolled or anything like that. But I never received one negative thing. And obviously it went on all of them, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. Um, But I just said the amount of messages I got where it was like, Gilly, you've stopped me from doing something, or do you know what I mean? And people have seen it, that that's all I ever wanted from it. And it, I, it was something that I was never comfortable sharing previously, but I think here at this club, like, I felt comfortable enough to say, do you know what, I, I feel respected enough and valued enough for me to be able to go, I want to share my story while I'm here. Yeah. And not sort of it go under the radar, but actually do a big thing about it. So yeah. I think that's the best thing is that it was just, I was supported and, we did the best thing with it, you know, yeah. like, and, and impacted a lot of people. Yeah, and I think a lot of people can resonate with it as well, which is probably yeah. why you had such good feedback, because it's, like, a, co- a common thing, but you were brave yeah. enough to kind of say that. And I remember when you, like, did it and then they showed it to the team and everyone was in tears, because yeah. no one knew. But I think as well, like, now when you're older, like, I think I, I feel like back then, I, when I was younger, that I felt like I, that was the toughest thing I'd ever been through. And then I get older and I'm like, no, nah, I've been through a lot worse, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, yeah. that's I know that's one thing my mum always worries is like, if I go quiet, she's always like, oh, what's going on? Like you stop texting and everything. I'm like, mum, listen, like, <laughs> no, I'd, I'd never ever, I would never ever do that again. But yeah. now what, like the things you go through now, when you're young, I think you've got no worries then. You've got yeah. no stresses when you're young. Like, that's like, I did have stresses, yeah, but when you talk about when you're older, yeah. you, you're really fighting and fending for yourself. You know, yeah. like when you're younger and you're 16, 17, you're still under your sort of parents' radar and you know that like, you're not got a full-time job or anything like that. But it's mad to think how people deal with things now when there's a lot more 
You know, even in this world now, like with yeah. poverty and everything yeah. like that. Like, but this was this was probably one of my most favourite um, appearances that I've done. Obviously at the club yeah. it was obviously meeting Siobhan, who's, who's got a stage four um, cancer, and it was yeah, it was lovely to meet her. And that just is still from this to this day, like she'd catch up with her on Twitter and stuff, yeah. and she's doing really well. So it's um, yeah, I could see her, you know, pop up, and obviously it's, it puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Of how you know how where we're at, sort of, we're so lucky to be able to do this every day, take health for granted. And she's there raising her two boys, you know. And she's such a positive woman, like, even <clears> turning <throat> up, opening the door, she was just like, <gasps> like, she was so, like, happy. And even when she was speaking about having cancer, like, I was getting choked up listening yeah. to her and not once did she get emotional about it or anything. She was just like, listen, and she lost her friend previously to it as well. And she was just like, listen, this is like, this is it, this is how I deal with it, you know, and yeah, it's amazing, amazing. Incredible. Yeah, incredible woman. So, like, obviously now this is your 100th appearance. What would you reflect on your time being at West Ham? Yeah, I think, like, for me, I think I've, like, I fell in love with the club, you know, like, and I've always been proud to to wear the badge and to obviously to lead the team out from, from day one. Um, I feel like I've grown up a lot, I think, being at the previous clubs that I was at, we had we had everything given to us, and when obviously coming to here, it was like a brand new team coming into the league, and it was sort of that educational side as well. And the club was able to listen to players who'd played at pro clubs, you know, and say, listen, this needs to happen, this needs to happen. And compared to then to where it is now, like the first day of pre-season, where obviously we was over at Little Heath, and you know, like we didn't get no food, no nothing, like. And even like kit was limited, and now we've the facilities that we've got, like obviously coming to here, and it's just been an, an amazing change. But like, I think I've I've been proud to to play for the club. Like obviously, I think 100 appearances. I always think like that don't seem a lot, you know. Like when yeah. you think of the four years like we've been here, um, and obviously COVID stopped us from getting it a lot sooner. But it's just um, yeah, it's, it's been enjoyed. There's been highs, there's been lows. Um, I think obviously last year was probably one of the toughest ones in regards to not being in a relegation battle. I think yeah. for the first time for a lot of us in our careers as well. Um, but that was that was tough. But yeah, it's just it's been great. It's obviously the the fans have been great getting to know them as well, and obviously the fans that have been with us from the very beginning as well, and obviously stayed with us too. But yeah, I felt proud to to lead the team and and to hit 100 appearances. Yeah.